Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Please stand with me for the reading of God's Word this morning. It comes from Psalms 78, verses 1 through 8. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and His might and His wondrous wonders that He has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. And they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this precious day, a day that we honor our mothers, a day that you have made for us to be here in your presence this morning. We thank you for those precious mothers that have brought their children up to know the ways of God, to know the word of God, to know faith in Jesus Christ. And God, as we hear your word this morning, may we, may we learn to do that again and remember that you have brought us up to do that, to teach our children for generations and generations. God, save a soul today, Lord, or more than one, Lord, if it's your holy will. We pray that uh, Christian will be hidden behind the cross of Calvary and in your word, and let the Holy Spirit do all the talking today. And may we hear you, Lord. May we hear you and obey. We'll praise you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Please join us as we sing. much. You may be seated. Well, good morning, and we are going to begin a special portion of our service this morning as we uh, do child dedication. And, and I want to read this verse for us before we begin. It comes from Psalms chapter 1. 27 verse 3 and it says this it says children are a gift from the Lord amen they are the reward from him and so we have uh, a group of parents that are making this beautiful and important step of committing and dedicating their children to the Lord and so I'm going to have those come up and so parents as I read your child's name would you come up to the stage first off Mr. Jameson Jeffrey Brown. Here you go, Mr. Jameson. There you go, buddy. You want to grab it? <laughs> Jameson's happy today. Next up, Harper May Kane. Miss Harper May Kane. Here 
see you there, Miss Parker. Next up, Spencer Lee Smith. There you go, Spencer. Miss Lennon Catherine Will. And then last up, Miss Timberland Grace Hall. Miss Timberland Grace. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Spencer is excited. Well, parents, I'm going to read a few things and then I'm going to uh, turn my attention to parents. And parents, uh, we're just going to have a few commitments that I ask that you would commit today in front of. Uh, the congregation in front of the Lord Almighty uh, this morning for your child. But let me say this. In the Bible, we are not required to have a formal dedication ceremony. You know, we are uh, called by God to baptize, and we're called to have the Lord's Supper. We see those two ordinances. Uh, but though it is not specifically called to have a specific ceremony, uh, it is very, very important. In fact, remember in the Old Testament, Hannah, she goes and she dedicates Samuel uh, before the Lord. Uh, and, and here's what we see in 1 Samuel. So Hannah says this. She says, I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now give him to the Lord, for his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. Two things very quickly. Parents, pray for your children. Pray for them. Do not, it is so important, do not miss a day to pray for your children. And then number two, give them to the Lord. I, I believe this represents you giving your child to the Lord. And so would you make that commitment today and every single day that God, this child is not just mine, but most importantly, this child is yours. And so I'm going to look at four things today with four scriptures, and then I'm going to ask questions, and I would ask all of you to respond uh, in harmony to these questions. The first one, number one, comes from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. It says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. What Paul is writing here to Timothy is that those who do not provide for their children uh, or for their family at all is worse than an unbeliever, and since this is a very important calling. And so parents, I'm going to ask you this. Do you promise to do whatever it takes to provide for this child and your family? Would you respond by saying, I do? Number two, it's the call of the Great Commission. We know the Great Commission as a missionary call to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. But we also see in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, the writer of the Proverbs gives us a bit of wisdom that says, Train up a child in the way he or she should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. I'm going to ask you two questions, and then you can respond appropriately. Question number one, do you promise to commit to the, the, the discipleship of your children? And then number two, do you commit to the teaching them and training them in all that Christ has commanded? Would you respond with, I do? Number three is the greatest commandment. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, that you would love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the greatest commandment. So parents, I ask you this question. Do you commit to loving the Lord? with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You can respond by saying, I do. This commandment to love for you guys first uh, is important because if you love God first, this is the way you're truly going to show love to your child in the greatest way. And then lastly, number four, Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, verse 1, he says, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. In other words, Paul's desire was for the people of God to experience salvation. Paul's prayer was for the Israelites to be saved by the wonderful grace of God. Now understand this, and, and this is for everybody to understand, but especially the parents. Baby dedication does not assure of salvation. In other words, each and every one of these five beautiful children that are up here are one day going to have to make the decision themselves. They're going to have to make the decision to ask God to save them of their sins. And so here's what I encourage you to do. Would you commit every single day to pray that God would one day save your children? Would you say, I do? 
And then lastly, I'd like to do this. In congregation, this is where you guys come in as well. The old saying is, it takes a village to raise a child, and that is true. Uh, but I also believe it takes the church uh, to disciple a child. Uh, and so for the entire church, here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray a blessing over these children. I ask that you would pray for them, uh, and then that you would commit to the discipleship of these children as they go through the nursery, as they go through RS1 Kids and Next Level Youth, that we would be a part of that. And so church, would you join me in praying for these children, parents? I encourage you to pray as I pray. Father, we thank you for these kids, God. God, we know kids are loved by Christ as we saw he encouraged the children to come to him. And Lord, I just pray, God, I pray for these parents right now. Man, what a commitment it is to commit their child to the Lord. And God, though it's going to be hard and difficult some days, and God, those are going to be days where, where they, they might not know the exact answers to all the questions or to how exactly parent properly, but God, I pray that by your spirit, God, that you would guide them, God, that you would help them, God, to train their child up in the way that they should go. God, that these little children up here right now, God, that they would become disciples of Christ. God, that they would become world changers. They would become missionaries. God, that they would become dedicated to the ministry, that they would live pure and, and beautiful lives that honor and glorify you. So I pray for the parents, but, but God, right now I lift up these children. God, keep them from the enemy. God, protect them. Give them good health. God, would you bless them and keep them? And God, would your face shine upon them? Would you be gracious to them? And Father, we just pray that one day here at First Baptist Church, we are all able to see these children accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I pray that one day in the future, God, that we see these children baptized, showing that relationship with you. We pray this in your awesome name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Parents, you may be seated. Let's give these parents a hand for their commitment to the Lord. All right. Well, at this time, we have the ushers. If ushers would come forward, ushers, if you wouldn't mind coming forward, we will have our offering this morning. All right. Donnie, we're using the red mic. Awesome. And Jeff Hoover, would you pray for us this morning? You, you can use that one, Jeff. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning and we just pause first to give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the opportunity and the privilege and the freedom that we have to come this morning to your house and to worship. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for so many blessings, but especially this morning. We thank you for these young children who've just been dedicated. We thank you for their parents and their families who are here to support and love them. And Father, just help us as a church to be the church family that those families need in, in raising these children. And Father, on this special morning, we thank you for the mothers who are here, for the love and the example that they have set for all of us. Father, we thank you for the greatest gift of a mother. We thank you for those that are here and for those who have gone before us in the example they set for, for all of us. And Father, I thank you for the mother in my life and the example she set and the way she led our family. And Father, this morning there are some who are hurting, who are facing battles and struggles, and you know who they are and you know the situation. And Father, you're the great healer. And we lift each of them up to you that, that your will would be done. And through it all, that you would receive the honor and the praise and the glory. Help us to use this offering in a way that's pleasing and acceptable to you for your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen.
Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. I said, if that doesn't get you going, then uh, I think your wood's wet. Is that the right saying? I think that's it. Well, I hope it's not wet this morning. I hope you're excited to be here this morning. I hope you're excited to be in the house of God this morning. Let's all stand as we show our appreciation to God the Father this morning. Oh. Uh-huh. 
Thank you. Thank you for releasing us from that bondage when you saved our souls. Father, we praise you for everything that you do for us, the many blessings of life, and Lord, even the trials, and Lord, even when you send your convicting spirit upon us to restore us back where you want us to be. Father, we pray this morning that you will use the song, the message, the prayers, everything, Lord, to touch hearts and lives. Lord, we know there's people this morning that need to know you as Lord and Savior. And we trust that your spirit is moving among us, Father. We know that you are willing and you are able today to save those souls that are willing to ask. Father, we pray for Brother Christian and, Lord, that his words will be your words, that they will pierce hearts and minds. And, Father, that your word will not return void. It will be effective and it will accomplish that which it's set to. God, be with us and help us, Lord, as your people to receive your word. And even though sometimes it stings and hurts, Father, It's always true, and we need it in our lives. In your precious holy name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. The title of our message this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Uh, And our title is this, is how to make your mama happy. Uh, How do you make a mama happy? I'm sure you guys have your own ways in which you try to make your mom happy, and each mom is a little different. Uh, there are things that make some moms happy that don't make others, and, and there are some things that, I mean, make mamas really, really happy. And so what makes your mama happy? You know, m- maybe like a Target gift card, uh, a $200 Target gift card. That would make some of you mamas happy. Uh, they would love that. For, for some of them, moms, I know you're not asking for a lot. Sometimes what makes a mama happy is just pick up your daggum socks out of the floor, right, mamas? Like, like that just brings joy to a mother when, when her, her children do as they're told or, or pick up after themselves. There's lots of things that can make moms happy. And uh, what I'm going to do this morning is, is we're going to try the best we can biblically to answer this question. Now, here's how the message is going to go today. There, there's actually two parts. And in honesty, it's actually two different messages. And so if you are under 18 years old, All right, if you're under 18, if you are in high school down, uh, you have the beginning of the message, all right? Uh, And good news, if you are under the age of 18, this is the best news you've heard in a church in a long time, right? Your sermon is only five minutes this morning, okay? Uh, And so I'm I'm serious, like like I'm going to preach the first five minutes, uh, and after 18, you know what, you can... Well, don't get on your phone, but, but you know what? You just, you just hang tight after that, all right? You got the first five minutes. After that, all right, we're going to talk about how to make our mamas happy. After that, we're going to address the parents, and uh, I've, only been, I've not even been a parent for two years, uh, and so here's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm not going to tell you how to parent, because uh, I'm still, I really don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure that out, but what I'm going to do is going to give biblical principles on what the scriptures teach us about parenting, and then, and then here's your job as parents is, is to take what the Bible teaches uh, and then we apply it to your situation. And so, all right, let's take Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 4, uh, and if you have God's Word with you, if you do not, it will be up on the screen. Here's what Paul writes. He says, children, obey your 
parents. Amen, mamas. Hey, we might have revival this morning in First Baptist Church. We could leave off of that verse, right? I might have an altar call right now. Mamas, if you'd like to dedicate your child again, uh, we might do that. Obey your parents. But let's go on. The verse continues. Uh, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Verse 4, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in discipline and instruction in uh, the Lord. So, all right, everybody under 18, uh, I feel like I'm youth pastoring again. All right, here's your message. Five minutes, let's set the clock. Children, obey your parents. Why are we to obey our parents? Because simply the scriptures say, uh, well, one, it's in the Bible, but the scriptures tell us this. This is right. Like, like, this is the right thing to do. This is what we're called to do. Children, obey your parents. Now, I know what you're thinking. Man, man Christian, like, they ruin all the fun. Like, like everything I want to do is fun that they ruin. They, they don't know what it's like to be a kid. Like, like when they were a kid, dinosaurs were still roaming the earth, and it's different now. Like, like I don't have to run after a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I have an iPhone now. It's different. That's what you're thinking, kids, right? Like, that's what's going through your mind. It's a, it's a different time. They don't understand. Well, here's the good news. I, I'm preaching today, and, and I'm closer to your age, and so if we just take what we see biblically, I, I think I understand the position you're in today. And so here's what I want to say to our students. Students, uh, th- this is your key point. I mean, it's an easy message. You take this key point, uh, and, and then you can check out for a while. Ready? Students, if you don't understand anything today, hear this. When you disobey your parents, when you disobey what mom or dad says, you are not just disobeying mom and dad. When you disobey or you do not honor your mother and father, you are disobeying the almighty, all-powerful, all-loving creator and sustainer of the universe. And so put it in perspective, students. When it comes to obedience to mother and father, when you're being disobedient, it's not like I just didn't listen to mom and dad's advice, they don't know any better. When you are being, according to scripture, when you disobey parents, you are disobeying the creator and the sustainer and king of the entire universe. And so put into perspective the importance of obedience. Obedience to parents is a huge deal. In fact, students, listen to this. It's such a huge deal that it was put into the Ten Commandments. But not only was it put into the Ten Commandments, the idea to honor your mother and father, you know what? It came before things like, thou shall not murder, thou shall not steal, thou shall not lie. Like, honor your mother and father came fifth on the list. Before all of these things, it was of great and utmost importance for for children to understand what it means to honor and respect and obey their parents. In fact, Paul quotes this as he says, uh, look with me, chapter 6, verse 2, students, you're still on the clock, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. And so what's happening here is that in Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse 12, we see the Ten Commandments. Paul is quoting from the Ten Commandments. Now, now he, he quotes that this is the first commandment with the promise. So the question we need to ask this morning is what is the promise? It's this. Paul says it, that it would go well with you when you obey your parents and that you may live long in the land. Now, real quick, does this mean that if you obey your parents, you are automatically going to live a long life. Like, like, does this mean if you're obedient to your parents, you're going to live to 100? Does this mean that you are, if, if you are a disobedient little menace, right, does this mean that you're, you're going to die a, a short death? I don't think so. In other words, Christian, what are you saying? Well, let me say this. There is some advice that your parents are going to give you that's going to help, uh, that's going to help your life and lifespan, okay? Like, for example, when your parents teach you to drive, uh, the, the little principles that they teach you are for your safety. Uh, when your parents teach you things like, like hey, uh, uh, don't drink and, and don't put substances in your body that, that are harmful and, and don't smoke, and th- those are things that, that are going to increase your lifespan, right? So, so there are some things that when you obey your parents, it's going to increase your life. Like, for example, my mom had to do a lot of reminding me uh, the disaster that comes when you mix fire with gasoline and, and when you play with fireworks. And that was, my mama taught me those things. And guess what? It expanded my life when I listened to her instruction. And so when we think of this idea that Paul says this commandment to obey and honor your father and mother, that it comes with a promise, 
It's not so much talking about longevity of life, while it could be. More importantly, it's talking about the quality of your life. That, that children, when you obey your parents, you, you live an obedient life, there are going to be spiritual blessings that come from godly obedience. And so children and students and, and those of you who are under 18, I encourage you, obey your parents. I know you're not going to agree with everything they say. I know you're not going to like particularly everything they say. But if you live a life of, you know what, I'm going to obey them because I understand by obeying them, I am obeying God Almighty. If you put that into perspective, the scriptures say it comes with a promise and there's going to be a blessing that comes from being obedient and abundant and good life. And so obedience to parents is important. All right, kids, you're done. Um, parents now. But let's put, let's put parents on the hot seat. What, what, what do we understand from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1? Like if, if we see that, that children obey your parents as a command from God, what, what does this mean for parents? Well, parents, this is good news for you. Parents, because of this passage, we understand that a key principle that we can take from this passage is simply this, that, that parents should expect obedience from their kids. Obedience should be expected. Now, and I understand, I, I haven't had a teenager yet, and, and I understand that to expect obedience is sometimes uh, far-fetched and, and it's difficult. Look, I, I understand that. Here's what we know. Kids are going to mess up. They're going to make mistakes. And I think it's important to, to give your kid a little bit of room to make minor mistakes, right? And then when they make them, you can teach them the ways of, of God. I, I think it's important to, to help your kids learn from those. But biblically, here's what we understand. Biblically, we understand that you should still expect obedience from them. Why? Because it's their very calling and command from God. P parents, you expect obedience because that is the command and calling that God has put on their life in the situation and in the place they're in right now. Parents, God has placed you in authority over your kids. The position you are in right now, you are in authority over your children. And church, we need to raise a generation of disciples who love and who honor their parents. We need to raise a generation of, of kids and disciples who respect authority. Because let's be honest, in the world today, and I don't think it's any surprise, uh, here's what I've observed. In, in the world today, authority is, is not our highest uh, virtue, right? Would y'all agree with me? Like respect for authority is not the highest virtue in culture today. Would, would y'all agree with that? I think what, what I observe is that the respect for any type of authority is, is not something that culture looks at and encourages. L let me tell you about an article. I was listening to a podcast. I was mowing the other day, and this podcast came on about a week and a half ago, uh, and it was about parenting, and it directed me to this article. And so I went and read this article, uh, and, and the article was from 2009. Let, let me read you the title of this article. Uh, in 2009, there was, this was written from a guy in Britain. Uh, it was called The Spoilt Generation. And, and here's the rest of the title. The Spoilt Generation, colon, parents who fail to exert authority are breeding youngsters with no respect for anyone. And, and so this, this article is based off of a lot of the findings uh, from a psychologist named Eric Sigmund. Uh, and I'm going to read, let me read four of these things that we found uh, from the article that I think are worthy of attention for today. Uh, no, number one is this, we find this from the article. It says, a growing lack of adult authority has bred a spoiled generation of children who believe grown-ups must, check this out parents, must earn their respect. The article goes on, attempts to empower children and lack of discipline in the classroom have also fostered, this was from his findings, rising levels of violence at home, at school, and in the street. And then listen to what Dr. Sigmund says in this article. And I, and I think this is fascinating uh, when we think of the term authority. Dr. Sigmund says this. He says, authority is a basic health requirement in children's lives. You hear that? Authority is a basic health requirement in children's life. Children of the spoiled generation are used to having their demands met by their parents and others in authority. And that, in turn, makes them unprepared for the realities of adult life. And, and so basically this article is what, what Dr. Sigmund is arguing is authority is important because if, if parents don't practice 
the authority that they have given by God over their children. If they don't practice this, it doesn't prepare them for the real world. And then we kind of see what has resulted in society today. Now, I bring up an older article because that was in 2009. I, I don't think that this article sparked a revolution because it doesn't seem like it has gotten much better since that point. Let, let me read you an article, teachers uh, and, and uh, those of you in the school system. You, you'll find this fascinating. Here's another article from 2023. This article from 2023 uh, is, is not about parenting, but it's about child behavior. L listen to what it says, because I think there's a connection. The National Center for Education Statistics questioned school leaders on this issue last summer, the issue of children behavior. It found that 56% of school leaders said the pandemic led to increased classroom disruptions from student behavior, and 48% said it led to more acts of disrespect toward teachers and staff. Now, I'm not in the school system, but teachers, I'm not going to ask you. Uh, I don't know how it is in Russell County, but there are uh, enough schools to write an article about the fact that since the pandemic, behavior in schools has gotten worse. And so teachers, uh, Stacy, I don't need an amen. Maybe you agree. I don't want to know if you agree or not. I'm just reading this article. Now, what, what's important about this article is it said the article specifically points out the idea that the pandemic led to certain misbehaviors that we now see, and they have gotten worse. Now, now, let's talk about the pandemic. Oh, pandemic. All right, let's just talk about it. what happened during the pandemic. Well, there was isolation, uh, and then children were at home more than they had ever been at home before, and so no longer are the, the parents able to get rid of their children for a few hours to be in the school system, right, and to learn under authority, uh, authorities that are over them. Now they're, they're at home, and they're under the authority of their parents. And so here's what's happened is after the pandemic, and I'm sure there's other, uh, there's other things that go into effect with the study, but here's what we understand. After the pandemic, kids got worse. What, what are we saying? After kids spent more time with their parents, their behavior got worse. Why is that? M maybe it's because parents no longer institute this, this God-given, uh, this, this God-ordained sense of what? Of authority that has been given to them by God. The kids were at home more than ever, and they seemed to get worse. Why? Because maybe parents were just putting off their kids to video games and their phones rather than parenting them the way God has called them to. In fact, even at this point, you guys will find this, it's sad, gosh, it's so sad, but it's kind of funny, um, I read an article this week, and when we think about the idea of authority, uh, there was a girl in a high school in Tennessee, she got her phone taken away. And, uh, you know, most girls, they get their phone taken away. Why'd you take my phone away? Like, they're, they're, they yell at the teacher, might uh, get mad at the teacher. That's normal. Uh, but in this particular high school last week, uh, this girl got her phone taken away, and instead of yelling at the teacher, she yelled at the teacher, uh, and then she pepper sprayed the teacher. Uh, this is a true story. She, she pepper sprays the teacher. Now, uh, if I'm a teacher, I'm getting my real estate license or something right after that. Uh, but but, but why, why do I bring that up? Because it seems like from the article in 2009, the idea of authority uh, not being uh, on display in the life of the family, it doesn't look like it's gotten any better, which is why I say this. The world needs godly, Bible-believing Christian homes where children are obedient to their parents and their parents understand the position that God has placed in which is the position of authority. And I know authority is a hard word, right? Because authority has been abused uh, and it has been misused so many times. I, I know it is a hard word, but, but it shouldn't be. Because for Christians, the Bible speaks a lot about authority. L let me give you a few verses. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. Honor everyone. Honor the emperor. Verse 18 of 1 Peter chapter 2 says this. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect. In other words, employees, be subject to your employers. Romans chapter 13 verse 1, Paul writes, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. We go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32. The Old Testament tells us to respect and honor our elders. Uh, Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. And then Titus chapter 3, verse 1 says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work. The scriptures are full with the idea of the importance of respect, honor, uh, and, and obedience to those who are in 
authority. So much so that they are following the Lord, of course. But there's this important idea of authority. And so honor your parents. Obey your parents. Not just now. That There also comes a sense we could preach another message on even when you're older. But honor your parents. But then the verse goes on. Let's look back at Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 4. Paul calls out the fathers. Now, what I'm getting ready to say, it relates to fathers and mothers as well. But specifically, he calls out the fathers. And he says, fathers, do not provoke your kids to anger. Do not provoke your kids to anger. And so here's what Scripture is telling us so far. Expect obedience. But let me say this, parents. Even though we're to expect obedience, do not let the authority given to you by God over your child lead you to demonstrative actions and outbursts that provoke anger within your kids. In other words, don't parent in a way that makes your kids hate you. But like, don't parent in a way that's going to make them mad at you. Now, now let me say this. Uh, first and foremost, your father, your mother, you're not a dictator. Your child needs to understand a command more so than they just simply need to hear a demand, right? They need to understand the why. They need to understand what Scripture says and why and who God is. And, and then we parent based off of what the Scripture speaks about. But, but let me say this, Christian, what if my kid gets mad at a rule I give him? The Bible says, do not provoke your kids to anger. So what if, what if my kid gets mad? Parents, are you kids going to get mad at you? This is response time. Parents, are you kids? Yes, like, like they're going to get mad at you. They're not going to like your curfew. They're not going to like the expectations on dating that you said. They're not going to like some things. So does this mean that you become a passive parent because the scriptures say, do not provoke anger? No, because when we interpret scripture, we interpret the whole of scripture, right? So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, we still, it is still required that they expect, parents, expect obedience. Children, obey your parents. Obedience is expected. But the idea of not provoking anger to your child uh, in a parent is to do so in a way, in, in other words, let me say this, Colossians chapter 3, verse 21, it says the same thing, fathers, do not provoke your children, but then it finishes with this, lest they become discouraged. And so the point of this passage is to parent in a way where, yes, sometimes your kids are going to get mad because they don't want to follow your rules. But, but understand this, is that you are to parent in a way that encourages your child. That, that you're to teach them the way and the why. Are you always going to agree? No, but as authority as the parent, you still have that authority to teach and to give rules, but to do so in a way that encourages your child. And then we move on. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in discipline. Uh, if you talk about godly parenting, you talk about good parenting, uh, we have to bring up the idea of discipline, right? Let's, let's look at three passages of discipline very quickly. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 through 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him who he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. What do we understand? God disciplines and he reproves the one he loves. And so, therefore, a lack of discipline in the Christian life, lack of discipline would be a lack of love. The writer of Proverbs also says in chapter 13, verse 24, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. And so sparing discipline is a lack of true love and care. The loving parent disciplines. Now, I'm not telling you how to discipline. I, I ain't telling you switch, belt, or, or paddle. You know, like, it's, you don't even have to do those. What I'm saying is this, discipline is crucial in parenting because true parents and true loving parents show discipline. And then let's finish with one more, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. The first part of this says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. If you love discipline, you're a smart man. If you love discipline, you are a wise woman. But understand this, the second part of this verse, it says something that in, in our eyes uh, seems like an outrageous comment. Uh, and so, students, if, if your parents told you not to say this word, don't say it, uh, but this is what scriptures say. He who hates reproof is stupid, all right? The definition of stupid, according to this passage, would be someone who does not listen to the instructions their parents have given them to help them. The, the definition of stupid would be someone who, who doesn't take discipline and learn from it. And so, here's what the scriptures is basically saying is basically teaching. Parents, discipline, and then, and then, and then kids, all right, I'm going to give you one more minute of a message. Kids, learn from that discipline. You, you, your, your parents, they want the best for you. Are they perfect parents? No. But learn to live 
a life where you learn from discipline. And then this, after Paul says discipline, uh, bring them up in discipline. But also, here's what's important. Bring them up in instruction in the Lord. And we'll finish with this passage in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 7. Uh, one of the most popular passages uh, in uh, the Old Testament law. It says, hear, O Israel. Uh, this is the Shema. This is the idea of being able to hear and then obey this command. The command is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. And then verse 7, you shall teach them. It's talking to parents now. Parents, you shall teach diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit at your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. What do we understand from the scripture? Parents, you are to teach. To teach what? Well, verse 6 says this, teach the words that God has commanded. And so here, here, here's my rally call. Here's my cry for parents this morning. Parents, would you teach your children the scriptures? Would you teach them? Yes, teach them how to change their oil. Yes, yes teach them how to, how to sew. Yes, teach them different trades. Do that. Teach them educational things. Yes, but teach them the word of God. Here's what I found. I noticed this in my time as, as youth pastor. I haven't confronted this with Johnny, but I'm sure his is alike. In fact, also, uh, I looked at a study on Barna, uh, and there are several youth pastors that agree with this statement. The biggest issue in youth ministry right now, y'all know what it is? It's not participation. The biggest issue in youth ministry is not culture. The biggest issue that Johnny has is not relating to their level. It's not teaching hard truth. These are not the hardest issues within youth ministry. For, for those from 6th grade to 12th grade, this is not the biggest issue. Barnett did a study a few years ago, and what they found to be the biggest struggle in ministry for youth pastors was this, and this is going to hurt, but it was parents not prioritizing their teens' spiritual growth. Not prioritizing their teen's spiritual growth. In other words, not teaching their children the scriptures. Understand this, parents. Yes, church is for your kid to grow in the word and in the knowledge of him. Bring your kids to vacation Bible school. Bring them to Wednesday nights. Bring them to the youth events. Bring them to Sunday school. I think you should do all of those things. Those are important. But first and foremost, parents, your job as a follower of Christ, your job is to teach your children the ways of God. Now look, if you have trouble along the way, that, that's where I'm here to help. Brother Jarek's here to help. Johnny, Danielle, look, look, we have people in the church. We all help each other together. I understand that. But first and foremost, it is the parent's job. It is the father's job. And it is the mother's job. Their greatest calling is to teach their kids the way of God. As 68% of youth pastors said, this was their biggest issue. And so I'll finish with this. Mothers, I think the biggest commitment you can make, I know it's hard raising kids and being a mother is probably the hardest job on the planet. I understand that. But know first and foremost that the greatest thing that, that you can do as a mother, I think, I think of my own mom and the greatest thing, she did so many things for me. The greatest thing that Tracy Naylor ever did was, for Christian Naylor was to teach me the scriptures and to teach me to act in a way that glorified God. And so, th so this morning as we close, I want to do two things. I want to, since it's Mother's Day, I, I want to focus on the moms. Moms, make today a day of commitment. You might have messed up. You might have not done the best job at parenting. You might have not really taught your children the scriptures, but you know what? Today is a new day. And so here's what I ask you, Stacy, if you guys would like to come up. Here's what I ask this morning, moms and then, of course, fathers as well. Would you make a commitment? Would you make a commitment today? May 14th, 2023, you can write it in a journal, you can put it in your notes in, in your phone, whatever you have to do. Would you make a commitment that no matter what, that I'm going to teach the ways of God to my children? Grandmothers, would, would you make that commitment as well? Grandparents, hey, you know what? I might have not been the best parent, but I'm going to be the best grandparent I can, and I'm going to teach my grandkids the ways of God no matter what. This is the call that God has given us. 
God has placed you in a special position over your children. The greatest thing you can do is teach your children the ways of God. To teach them about the glorious truths of Scripture. To teach them about their Creator. So parents, would you make that commitment today? You know, there might be someone in here this morning too. Maybe a mom. He said, Christian, I want to do that, but I don't know if I'm committed. You know, moms, you might be asking that right now. You know, Christian, I, I, I want to do that, and that, that sounds great, but I don't think I've committed my life to Christ. There might be someone in here this morning that is not saved. If you're here this morning, well, let me tell this to you. No matter what your age is, no matter what you've done, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for your sins, and rose again from the grave. And he's calling you today to respond to committing your life to him. I know it can be scary because you don't know all the details. That's okay. Jesus just calls us to simply trust in him. And so this morning, as we sing this last song, especially to the moms this morning, if you realize, man, I have not committed to Christ, but you want to make today the day of salvation, I ask you, as we sing this last song, would you come down? I want to lead you in what that decision would look like. But you know this morning that you are not saved of your sins. Make the commitment to follow Christ. I promise you, not only is it the best decision for you, it's the best decision for your kids. And your kids' kids. And your kids' kids' kids. Let's pray, Father. God, we love you so much. God, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, I thank you for what you did on the cross for me. For fathers, for mothers, for children. God, I thank you for that commitment. Lord, if there is anyone here this morning, God, particularly a mother, God, that has not asked Jesus to save them. God, they haven't made that commitment to, to ask you to save them of their sins, God, that wants to be saved. This morning, God, would you help them to make that decision? God, would you lead them to the altar? Would you lead them to make a decision to, to commit to Christ? Because that's the most important commitment them and for the children. So Lord, if there's a mother here this morning that has not put their trust in Jesus, God, would today be the day of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you come this morning? be seated very uh, quickly.
Uh, mothers, let's want you to know we are thankful for you. Uh, we have a gift uh, for all mothers this morning. Uh, and so as you exit the doors, you will find uh, people passing out gifts. Uh, we just want you to know we appreciate you moms uh, more than you could ever know. Obviously, the greatest gift you give your mom is, hey, obey them, right? Amen, parents. And so uh, love your mama today. Uh, also, not only do we have gifts, uh, we have Danielle set up an awesome photo booth out there. And so this is for all families. Hey, get a picture with your mama, even if you have to wait in line. I promise it's, it's worth it. And so I went down to Russellville this weekend to see my mom. I forgot to get a picture with her, and I already regretted. I got a picture with her and Rosie. I didn't get one of us. And so I encourage you, go and take a picture um, at the photo booth uh, today. Uh, and then last, I'll be on vacation this week. And so if you need anything, uh, you can call Susie. Uh, she'll be in the office during office hours. Uh, but we will be back next week. Uh, and so excited uh, to spend some time with family. Uh, if you need anything, Susie's got you. And so uh, we love you guys. Happy Mother's Day. Stacy. happy Mother's Day. Would you sing us out? Yes, y'all please stand. <laughs> Praise God from heaven.